presentation, your project making or in your class. So thank you for thank you to the organizer for giving me this opportunity. And at the same time, number of the students might be my PG students, research students. So I hope you will give comment on this presentation later on. So topic for the today's talk is biology of invasive plants. Now, if we see the entire classification of the plant kingdom or animal kingdom, nowhere we find that uh, there is a special class or a space in any classification for the invasive. So invasive, they are just as good as other plants. But uh, question comes, why we are giving more emphasis to this particular type of the plant? So here we see what is the significance of these plants or how these plants affect other surrounding vegetation. So if we assume that what makes a man happy, it's surrounding greenery, biodiversity, animals, pleasant environment, it makes a person happy. But on the other hand, if we see what is the nature of surrounding which we are looking today? It is simply plain destruction, everywhere destruction. And this destruction or loss of habitat is considered as a one of the greatest threat to the existence of biodiversity. It is said that according to Convention for Biological Diversity 1992, which was held in Rio de Janeiro, that second worst threat is the biological invasion of alien species. Now, here we are using the word alien and invasion. So both are connected somewhere. If these alien, or they are also known as invader or exotic, or outsider, if they are not having any impact or negative impact, then we should not consider them as invasive plants. So according to a group of those who are involved with invasive species program, this program was developed in Australia during 2003 when they created a group for the study of such type of the plant and as per their definition, invasive alien species are non-native organisms that cause or have the potential to cause or harm to the environment, economics or human health. So it is quite clear from this that all those exotics which are entering in a new area, we cannot say that they are invasive in nature unless they are having harmful effect on the surroundings, on the economics, and even on the health of human being. So now question comes, so why there is creation of this, this separate group as invasive plants? Whether this group of invasive plants, they, have, they are different from the others, or they are performing better than the others, and if that, then what is the reason? So this is a question of immense theoretical and practical importance. As per the theoretical ecologists, what they do, they try to see that which are the plants which are doing such type of effect. So they principally try to understand the conditions that allow these species to invade community, coexist with the other taxa, and in other way, we can see that they are shaping, they are changing, molding the biodiversity of that particular invaded region. But if we see the, what is the applied aspect? So according to this applied aspect, they try to see that what are the characters which help in development of such type of area or such type of invasion by other plants.
So, biological invasion are grand natural experiments that provide one of ecology's most profitable avenue for testing our ability to forecast the distribution of species and diversity. As this entire process of invasion, settling, then increasing that area is happening in the nature, so it must be having number of the steps. So, if we can understand these steps, we can forecast distribution of these species, their diversity and their impact on the biodiversity and rest of the humanity. So, if we see the Indian scenario, it is assumed that roughly 50,000 species are present there. Of these 50,000 species, 18,000 species are belonging to angiosperm and roughly 40 percent of species they are exotic in nature. Among these 40 percent of species, 173 species which are scattered, which are present in the forest, in the cropland, wasteland, plantation, gardens and along roadside. And if we see what is the life form? What is the life form of these species, then it is very clear that majority of them, they are hubs, some are shrubs, few are climbers and some of them are trees. It means every form of life form, it is present on the earth's surface, they may show certain invasiveness in their characteristic. A different stage of evolution. So, when they are present at different stage, in early stage it is very difficult to identify that whether they are invasive or they are not invasive in nature. It is a rough estimate which shows that 40 percent are invasive in nature. So, very recently we have identified one plant that is Dodonia viscosa. This plant is a new entry in the protected area of Maharashtra and the area which covers by this plant, it suggests that this plant is actually not a local, not a new entry, but it is spreading widely and very recently we identified this plant that this is one of the plant which is extending its area just like a forest fire and hence we can see that this is the one of the new entrant of invasive plant in Maharashtra. Now question comes if we try to classify this 40 percent of the plant it is very clear that large number of the plant that is around 74 percent of the plants they have arrived here from the tropical America, 11 percent plants they are coming from the tropical Africa and remaining plants which contribute to the invasive plants of the India are Afghanistan, Australia, Brazil, East India, Europe, Madagascar, number of islands, Mediterranean, Mexico, Peru, temperate and South America, Tropical West Asia, West Indies and Western Europe. It means all the parts of the plants which are not connected by the land. In spite of that, we are finding that these plants are showing their presence in India. So, what makes these plants to come over when there is no connectivity, land connectivity from the America or from the Australia or other island. So, it is said that 
that human beings uh, are uh, the uh, vector or they are uh, main uh, mediator which bring the uh, these invasive plants to the India or any part of the region. So question comes, how man is responsible for bringing these invasive plant? It may be intentional or it may be unintentional. In case of the intentional for our various yeah. needs, for example, food, fodder, medicinal plant, horticultural plant, even for the beautiful flower, we bring so many plants from the other part of the world and try to grow in our area. Likewise, some comes unintentionally as a attachment to the human body with the luggage, with so many things, they come to the a particular place and there they try to establish themselves. So now they may come with the as human as a mediator, but can we say that from the beginning from the step one they are the invasive plants. So if we come, see come, different come. Uh, uh, steps how they come in the area. So stage zero it says that these plants, their propagules, their seeds, all these plants, they were present in the donor area in large quantity. Then in the first step, they start traveling to the another area with the help of number of the travel agency and human being. Then they get in the second stage, they get entry in the new area. In the third stage, these plants are present in particular area, but they are very very few in number. In the fourth stage, in the early fourth stage, the plants they try to spread themselves but still size of the population or number of these plants remain less. However, in the later part of the fourth stage, they, they multiply themselves and they become dominant force at the localized area. And in the fifth stage, after their dominance in the localized area, then they try to spread in other part of the area. So in this way, plant invasion process, it is because of ecological interaction and it influences the ecosystem power and soil ecology. After changing the soil ecology, after changing the microbes in the particular area, then these plants, they change the nature of the soil, chemical energy of the soil, soil water, soil air, everything around the, uh, their habitat, they change and in this way, they spread their landscape. Now, as we have seen, there are different steps of invasion or settlement of these plants, increase in the number of these plants and let, only later on we can say that now they become invasive in nature. So there are number of level of intensity. When these in plants are less in number at that time, they are not having any effect on the surrounding vegetation and they remain neutral as good as any other plant. But later on when the intensity of these plants increases, when it becomes serious at that time, they may have positive impact on the habitat. For example, it is observed that at the higher altitude, there is migration and even plantation of number of the and species. And at this higher altitude or elevated area, the low temperature, low rainfall, low soil nutrient content, it makes plants very, very difficult to live. But those plants which can survive, we introduce them as forage plants. For example, Trifolium, Ripens, Avena, Trifolium, Pretans, Dacus carota. These plants are intentionally introduced to these area to improve the grassland. But in the later stage, at one hand, they enrich the biodiversity of the surrounding area but they are not having an impact on the height of the native plants or cover of that area and biomass of local grassland ecosystem. Thus it suggests that in this stage they are increasing the biodiversity 
and they are not harmful but later on when the same plants they increase in the uh, population size they become malignant in nature and at this stage they are not only hampering development of the native plants but they also increase their area and they affect biomass of the local plants so in this way they become malignant and they are having negative impact on the biodiversity so as this figure shows that in the initial stage when they enter in any new area as they are few in number even after 5 years there is not much effect but after 10 years it is very clear that now these native species are more in number sorry these uh, invasive species are more in number and native species they are at the stage of extinction or leave away migrate from their homeland to the other areas so uh, this increasing impact of the invasiveness certainly it is because of certain traits which gives invasive potential to these plants so we can classify them as morphological traits physiological traits ecological traits and reproductive traits so theory of fitness homeostasis proposes that the species which has which maintain fitness over a broader range of environmental condition are more likely to be invasive it means these plants they can adjust themselves to the different climatic condition different soil condition different type of biodiversity poor or rich area by changing their structure by changing their metabolic process and even they change the reproductive traits of the plant to become more prominent and more successful in any new area so if we see the morphological traits what are these traits which make a plant more strong in a new area so here comes their growth which grow rapidly it means they need less time to develop they allocate more of their metabolites to the ground parts above ground parts so they, that they can get maximum amount of the sunlight that increase their metabolic processes at the same time they have low wood density resulting in high volume per unit carbon fixation low density it means mass is more and they are having more capacity to go for the photosynthesis and rest of the biochemical processes their structure is spreading architect is spreading their wood is very very thin just like a small tree or we may say that they are bushy in nature so number of stem coming from the ground bearing large number of the leaves and thus they make the structure potentially more good for the photosynthetic activity but at the other hand their life cycle is very small it means they want to complete their life cycle starting from the seed germination to formation of seed they complete their life cycle with it a short period of the time the time which is favorable for development of entire each and every stage of their life cycle these plants also have well developed root system it means they have the capacity to absorb water and other mineral component from the soil from far off area from the deep area so their dependence on the short supply of water is not because their root system is connected with the permanent water table of the earth similarly these plants they are showing genetic polymorphism and plasticity so because of polymorphism in their structure in their genomic composition they are able to adjust with the changing surrounding condition likewise these plants are having certain physiological traits like high nutrient extraction efficiency because of long root system 
they are physiologically strong to absorb more and more water and nutrient from the soil. Then internal cycling of these nutrient is also very fast. They are making secondary metabolites. When they think that now the time is not good for primary growth, they convert these primary metabolites into secondary metabolites, they store secondary metabolites and then they variously utilize the secondary metabolites for well-being. Likewise, they produce certain allelopathic compounds, compounds which are responsible for loss of the native plants or those which are surrounding these invasive plants and that is at the cost of their own growth and they are physiologically also show, showing plasticity it means they can change their rate and uh, cycle metabolic cycles as per the need of the plant and as per the climatic condition of that areas. There are certain ecological traits also. Because of plasticity, they are able to grow different type of the habitat, different type of the soil condition, climatic condition and at the same time they are having the potential of resistance and resilience. Resistance against negative factor and resilience coming again and again. So all these factors they give more strength to the plant to fight all the negative forces. Likewise, they are having habitat plasticity also. So, whether the soil is moist or supra moist or comparatively lesser water holding capacity, but they are able to develop such type of the traits. In addition to this, their reproductive traits are at the higher level as per plant productivity of these plants are more, they produce large number of seeds, large number of the flowers. They are not dependent on only one pollinator, number of the pollinator they may come and help in the pollination and reproduction. Likewise, in the early stage they produce large number of the seeds and these seeds, they are able to disperse far off area. So, production of large number of the seeds help in increasing their area and at the same time they may also reproduce by uh, vegetative means. So, if the conditions are not favorable for the production of the seeds, then they go for the vegetative reproduction. So, there is plasticity in the reproductive traits also. So, all these traits which they can mold, whether it is morphology, physiology, ecological or reproductive traits and because of this B line exercise, they are able to survive in all type of the climatic conditions. There is one more method which comes under the vegetative propagation that is known as clonal plant invasion. Majority of the garden plants, so those who are growing under the uh, close canopy, they are actually developing with the help of clonal development. So, epigenetic changes are much more persistent in clonal plant which translate into fitness differences and it contribute to the invasive success. So, because of epigenetics, there is as such no change in the genome. However, because of the underground material, they develop number of the new branches year after year and thus they maintain their genomic composition. So, we can see that in general there are two key factors which help in development or invasion of any plant and these two factors are resource accessibility and traffic accessibility. When we see resource ac accessibility, it means how much amount of nutrient available to this plant. So, we can categorize habitat into two types. One is resource rich habitat and another is resource poor ones. In case of resource rich habitat, since resources are more, these plants are many in number, 
they develop successively. However, in resource poor area, although they are lesser in number, but still they occupy resource poor area also. Similarly, traffic accessibility or number of the disturbances, they are also factor in increasing the area of occurrence of these plants. For example, how much amount of traffic volume is present? What is the intensity uh, density of the roads? What is the age of the road? What is the type of the road and transportation corridors? It means if there is more development of roads, it means more movement of the people, more movement of the vehicles and in this way there is increase in the area of occurrence of these invasive plants. It is said that even the fire, fire may be of a small degree of larger degree, but they help in the increase in the invasion. We can compare resource avail availability or the disturbance effectiveness on the invasiveness. It is very clear that if resource availability is low, then invasion is less, but with increased resource availability, there is rise in the uh, number of invasive plant. Likewise, if disturbance is less, there is a less occurrence or low occurrence of the invasive plant, but more disturbance increase the number of the invasive plant in this area. So, in this way, disturbance and resource availability these are the two key factors which are controlling number of the plants, invasive plants present in area. Decreased frequency of dis disturbances like fire suppression can prevent succession from being reset and favor strongly competitive invasive species. Then comes the acquire and use of the resources. We, on the basis of availability of the resources, we can classify high resource ecosystem and low resource ecosystem. In high resource ecosystem, just like farms or garden, here soil is of good composition, nutrient status of soil remain very high, it possesses a lot of or sufficient soil moisture, soil air, enough sunlight, enough temperature, it means each and every factor is good for the growth of the plant in high resource ecosystem. However, in low resource ecosystem, here because of uh, less amount of favorable character, they develop specialized roots, root system which can reach up to the permanent root table. They develop high density of the root and during this entire process, they try to conserve metabolites which they have produced. So, they conserve these resources in particularly in the root system and in the shoot system. And whatever small amount of the leaves they develop, these leaves are high tissue longevity and they remain there for the longer period and they help in absorption of the nutrient and development of the metabolite. So, when we compare high resource ecosystem and low resource ecosystem, we find that in high resource ecosystem, these invasive plants, they are dependent on the acquisition of the resources. While in case of low resource ecosystem, they believe in the conservation and because of conservation, they are able to live for the longer duration. In case of acquisition, period of the life, uh, period of this development is very small and at the end of their life span is small and these invasive plant, they come at as the fast return on investment. Now, if we see the trade-off, between the acquisition and conservation. Acquisition is going on in each and every plant, but whether they are going for the conservation or not. In case of 
high resource system, it is said that they, there is high rate of carbon assimilation, there is high amount of the nitrogen, but these plants they are having short life span. So, we can say that leaf economic spectrum LES it is playing their role in development of this type of the plants. Plant species with low leaf mass per unit area LMA, they have high rate of carbon assimilation, high leaf nitrogen, short life span occupy one end of the spectrum and invasive species are positioned closely to the fast return end of the LES that is leaf economic spectrum. However, the fast spectrum strategy seems at odd with an ability to tolerate low resource condition. As the species adapted to low resource system often display slow growth, resource use, efficiency, high LMA, high leaf mass per unit area, high tissue construction cost and long leaf tissue. So, in case of high resource system, they are short lived. In case of low resource system, they remain there for the longer period. Then in the soil invasion, soil is also playing a role. Each and every factor of the soil, whether it is temperature, moisture or micro macro nutrients, they are having their seed. Soil temperature had the strongest impact on the photosynthesis rate due to activation of root formation and functioning. It might increase water supply by root activation and the support stomatal conductance. Adequate water moisture contained maintained efficient light utilization and high photosynthetic rate and thus probably contribute to the success and geographical distribution of some invasive species, higher rate of water use, efficiency exhibited by invasive plants. While plant growth can be limited by number of macro and micronutrients, however, very few invaders can invade severely nutrient deficient soil. And this is the reason in the sandy area or in the area where the barren rocks is present, we find limited number of these invasive plant. However, in the well supplied area like agricultural farms or a garden area, we find large number of invasive plant. Likewise, climate change, which is the most discussed uh, topic nowadays, is also having impact on invasive plant. In many situations, climate warming may affect plant invasion by accelerating physiological processes or growth of invasive species or by increasing the competitive ability of invasive species. It increases the biomass, more biomass allocation to the stem of invasive plants and changes in the flowering traits. So, increase in the carbon dioxide increases photosynthetic rate. It also influences distribution of plant with thermotolerance because it allow for photosynthesis during period of high temperature by regulating thermotolerance protein that is known as HSP17 that minimizes damage and ensure protection of cellular homeostatic. It may facilitate plant invasion by accelerating physiological processes or growth of the invasive species or increase in the competitive ability of invasive plants, increase in the biomass, increase in number, all these and even change in the flowering condition, all these are because of the climate change. There are number of the reasons which are cited for invasion, invasive 
success. Majority of them we can say that these are because of the human impact. Human modified landscape not today even from number of the years, hundred of the years. And in this way they are giving invasive credit. These human modified landscape because of fragmentation or because of the edge effect and because of the number of the disturbances may be natural disturbances or anthropogenic disturbances, but they lead to the resource availability and competitive ability. So, in this way change in the habitat leads to the optimal habitat condition which allow flourishing of invasive plants. Likewise, it also affects seed dispersal and it is responsible for the production of number of the seeds or seed grains and then human practices like repeated and extensive introduction of the plants. Year after year, we are doing the same activity bringing those plants which are not native from the outside and trying to grow them. And in this way, there is development of the meta population which itself undergo number of the changes and recolonization. So, all these three factors seed drain, repeated introduction and recolonization it leads to the propagule pressure over the surface and thus these invasion credit, optimal habitat and propagule pressure it leads to the success of invasive plants. So, till now much of the work is done in case of the invasive plants like what is the which is the invasive plant, what is the size of population of invasive species and at the ecosystem level to guide to maintain intervention to address the impact of invasion. However, now it is realized that genetic approach and evolutionary perspective is necessary to understand ability of the species to progress during different steps of invasion. Whether it is only because of the climate or because of certain plasticity or internal changes, but where this genome or genetics of the invasives involve in the spread of these plants. So, it is said that these invasive plants they are good for ecoplasticity, they show plasticity variation under different type of the condition, they show change in their morphology that is morphoplasticity as per the surrounding climatic condition. And they are responsible for phenoplasticity also morpho and phenotypic plasticity is more or less correlated with each other and they are somehow connected with the surrounding change or ecoplasticity. So, number of theories have been evolved to see that what type of or what is the reason for development of these invasive plants. Certain genotypes they express a phenotype under different environmental condition. Genetic bottlenecks that reduce genetic variation compared to their native range result in inbreeding depression and decrease evolutionary potential. Purging deleterious alleles revealing beneficial cryptic variation or creating new beneficial interaction among genomic elements. So, this suggests that genetic bottleneck it may be because of genetic depression, but at the other hand it is creating some of the alleles which are good and which are removing the purging the deleterious alleles and thus they are beneficial for the growth of parting plants. Similarly, the evolution of increased strategic ability hypothesis assume that after release of the enemy, the invasive plants relocate their resources and rapidly evolve towards less defended but more vigorous ecotypes. 
So, whenever these invasive plants they come in contact with a native plant, first is the they release some of the chemicals and these chemicals are able to remove enemies or the native plants. Later on after that they utilize the same energy for the development of those secondary metabolites which help that is the um, uh, relocation of the resources that involve in the faster growth and development of the plants. So, in this way their chemical behavior also help in development of these plants. So, plant defense mechanism it can be divided into two types one is the resistance and another is the tolerance. Resistance it reduces damage to the plant and tolerance it mitigate the fitness impact mitigate the fitness impact of the damage. In case of the resistance they have that property that is constitutive property that present in the plant itself and many a time it is they induce the resistance by um, releasing certain chemicals that is the allelopathic effect. Likewise in case of the tolerance when they utilize the same energy for making the secondary metabolite for fitness of these plant itself and this is known as shifting different hypothesis where evolutionary shift towards plant defense against generalist instead of the space based herbivores. So, in this way because of certain chemicals these plants are able to get relief from the enemies and to get support from their own system for increasing their area of occurrence. Then there is functional plasticity. Now this functional plasticity it comes from genomic redundancy resulting from multiple episode of the genome duplication or polyploidy followed by genome fractionation, diplodization processes play a major role in plant diversification and adaptation. Likewise, duplicated genes or homologs they also exhibit various pattern of non-additive expression compared to their homologous genes in the parental species and creating antigenic functional plasticity even in absence of inter inner individual genetic variation. It means changes which occur because of duplication because of number of the loci for same genes they are able to give more strength to the plant. Another area of progress is on the effect of genome shock resulting from interspecific hybridization, polyploidization, which create gene expression reprogramming and phenotypic novelty. So, there is functional plasticity also and all this functional plasticity is because of number of changes which occur in their genome. It may be simple hybridization, it may be polyploidization or it may be various changes in the genes sometime only change in the location of um, different loci in the genome or sometime it may be because of change in the number or rearrangement in the chromosomes. Then there are ecological traps also. It is very interesting to know that even in nature there are certain traits which help in development of one particular species. For example, when invasive plants are more attractive than native host plant, then they attract the herbivores in the invaded range may experience reduced fitness. Volatile organic compounds which affect insect oviposition but plant nutritional and defense traits ultimately reduces the fitness of these natural enemies. So, it is simple attractiveness of these plants that is why they attract these uh, 
uh, insect and thus they reduce by uh, emitting certain chemicals they reduce the potential of these invader uh, these uh, insect and thus they are removing these natural enemies then many a time genetic variability is also responsible for increasing the invasiveness success of invaders with low genetic variability may depends on nature of the environment into which they invade with these species moving into agricultural landscape may acquire less genetic variability because they enter in a relatively homogeneous landscape success with limited genetic diversity may be due to the expression of phenotypic plasticity added by epigenetic responses to the environment and non additive genetic variants may either add in the fit, uh, fitness directly whereas those species which are invading in the natural environment in the heterogeneous environment high level of variability may be required so it is quite clear if the environment is homogeneous if everything is available and in this reason there is no need of variability in the genome or in the uh, morphology ecoplasticity or morphoplasticity or genetic plasticity is not required because everything is settled in a uniform manner however when they enter in a heterogeneous system where type of the soil is different other climatic factors are different and different enemies in the form of not only insect but native plant they are also variable in such situation there is need of high genetic variability if the plant want to get success so this is possible by epigenetic responses or by phenotypic responses to that area then invasion success although we say that phenotypic plasticity or ecoplasticity is sufficient for the uh, invasion but if we compare because of plasticity invasion succession is less because of physiological to tolerance it is better than the plasticity but invasion dependency is more or less on the natural selection from that area there are some more factors which are responsible for success of the invasion like additive genetic variants additive genetic variants help in adding more and more impact of the total genome change in the genome over the invasive then epistasis hybridization genetic trade off in case of genetic trade off they may produce certain good characteristic or bad characteristic but because of good characteristic they are able to survive and flourish then there are number of small number of the genes maybe because of polypolarization number of location these genes are present and these genes are helpful in development of the character or response of the plant to the surrounding changing character and then the genomic rearrangement it means a number of changes in the chromosomal structure number proposition they are having more impact on the invasion rather than the plasticity and physiological tolerance it is also said that as in the initial stage when the same plant was less in number at that time they are neutral they are behaving differently but when their number increases then they start showing their face it means with high size of the population they become invasive in nature they become more destructive in nature but now it is recognized that high level of additive genetic variants agv within the source population for traits 
that facilitate invasive or invasion rather than the need to attain sufficient population size. Now, here something is contradictory. If population size is less, then there is lesser chance of hybridization or change in the genomic composition or impact of large number of genes or genomic rearrangement. So, size of the population as per the old view is also necessary, but ultimately it is not simply size of the population, but variety of the genome which are developed because of inter or interspecific pollination fertilization, it leads to high level of AGV additive genetic variance and that ultimately have more impact on invasion than anything else. In case of hybridization, hybridization as we know it increases transgressive segregation of traits, it develops genetic diversity and heterosis. It may be because of transposable elements which responsible for high stress tolerance, increased phenotypic variance occur more frequently in newly created harsh recently disturbed environment. But ultimately it leads to the polyploidization. Because of polyploidization, it develops plants which are having broad ecological tolerance. They are successful ecologically and they are now have possess more capacity to invade any area. So, this hybridization which leads into different type of the genomic composition, but at the same time it affect size of the cell, it affect biomass of the cell, it affects cell weight or seed weight and seed size. It means it gives plasticity to the structure and thus make them capable to uh, go to the different area and to germinate in different type of the uh, habitat and ecological conditions. Then hybridization is expected to be important from the perspective of invasiveness under climate change also. In the normal condition hybridization is having its impact, but even when there is rising of the temperature or change in the climate, then it is it acts in two way. First, evidence is growing that climate change is increasing rate of hybridization as a species that were previously geographically isolated, they come in contact with each other. It means if earlier there was uh, sympatric type of speciation, but now it leads to allopatric type of the speciation hybridization bringing population from far off area to close to each other and thus they lead to a new type of the species. And another point is that Genomic studies suggest that genomes which are associated with the climate change adaptation can be of hybrid origin. So, first is change in the nature of the species and another is development of type of the genome which is responsible for profitable traits in the plant. So, these profitable traits or change in the genome is because of hybridization and thus hybridization uh, which is faster during the climate ch change has more reasons to increase their area and also to go for the speciation or plasticity in the morpho ecotypes. Now, hybridization and polyploidization both are working in some of the plants. For example, in case of napwit, centauria strobe, the centauria strobe which is uh, deployed cent uh, centauria strobe is already growing in the European countries, 
while uh, sorry in the america but tetraploid species which was growing in the europe was bring to that area in usa and here when they are planted it was observed that tetraploid species they become more invasive and there is almost action extinction of the uh, diploid species because of dominance of tetraploid species likewise in the spartina angelica allopolyploidy leads to the highly invasive plants as compared to the parental species and it shows phenotypic plasticity so phenotypic plasticity it may be because of symmetric mutation it may be because of structural mutation or because of regularity mutation which have long effect large effect on phenotype and they become common factor to fuel adaptation even in the short time frame of an invasion particularly to to the multi locus traits which have increased opportunities for mutation to occur in the introduced range a greater range of mutation may be advantageous and fast population growth provides more opportunity for new mutation to become fixed so here this different type of the roses it shows that all these are developed because of different type of the mutation somatic structural or regulatory mutation and thus there is production of number of the types and some of them may fix their genome and may grow further then there is impact of invasive alien species we have seen plasticity ecoplasticity genomic plasticity or morphological plasticity physiological plasticity all this plasticity leads to making these invasive plants more potent in winter than the native plants these invasive plants they have impact on the surrounding condition there is a link between global change invasion and invasions are complex and idiosyncratic although in general climate change land use change in, and increased resource availability seem to favor invasive species over in nature biotic invasion they hamper the environmental quality they hamper human health and they are responsible for the different type of the ecosystem at the same time and they are increasing success of the invasion but it is said that whenever there is habitat destruction it may be deforestation or other type of the destruction like fire regime it leads to the change in the land use where forest converted into the grassland or savanna and this change leads to less carbon sequestration at one hand and resource depletion in the other hand and because of this it leads to the climate change then greater phenotypic plasticity altered phenotype altered resources altered population rate it means entire ecosystem is changed and this change is started from the habitat destruction but ultimately it leads to more biotic invasion and more change in the surrounding conditions as we know that biodiversity performs a lot of functions as ecosystem services it may be supporting services providing services cultural services or regulation services however when invasive plants when these alien they enter in the in any habitat they disturb the biodiversity of that area they put a pressure on the biodiversity and as a result they also put pressure over the international trade over transportation tourism industry and climate change so 
In other way we can say that these invasive plants they are also affecting they are altering ecosystem services and are responsible for lot of upheavals which is taking place nowadays. These invasive plants they are responsible for major environmental change they are considered as driver of the environmental change they are affecting conservation they are affecting agriculture and human health this in turn alter the ecosystem features such as fire regimes food webs soil nutrients and cycling of the nutrient and in some total we can see that they are having negative impact on the population facilitation of uh, and they increase the invasion by other plants and they have lot of impact on surrounding ecosystem they change the evolutionary trajectory also such as by hybridization and evolutionary shift in species responding to the new in introduction or they are involved in development of those species which are good for the change climatic condition so it is reported that total cost of invasion worldwide reached a minimum of 1.288 trillion dollar us dollars over the past few decades with an annual mean cost of around 26.8 billion dollar per year so these invasive plants they are not only changing the environment or biodiversity in some total they are now responsible for costing more on the human life they are also impacting or question comes how these invasive plants they themselves are plants so how can we see that they are impacting biodiversity of the plant since in the definition itself is said that these are exotic they are not native plants these exotic or alien plants outsider when enter in an area because of their certain traits they have impact on the biodiversity of the native area among the loss of biodiversity five threats to biodiversity invasive species is considered as second threat which is responsible or second greatest threat which is responsible for loss of biodiversity so how it comes here it is responsible for reduction in density reduction in frequency and diversity of the native species it is responsible for replacement of the local native fodder grasses and other native medicinal plant these alien plants they favor entry of other alien species rather than the endemic or native species they change the environment so those who are coming from the outside they find situation favorable for them rather than the local plants then these invasives they are responsible for inhibiting seed germination of native species at the same time they utilize the user all the nutrients and water which is present in that habitat it means lesser amount of these nutraceuticals or uh, water is available to the native plants however well developed well grown with well developed root system these invader they utilize more or much of the nutrient then they are also responsible for genome pollution now what is the meaning of genome pollution they are affecting the local by interbreeding interbreeding with the local species it means they may be producing morphologically similar plant as the native plant but genomically they are more powerful than the native plant and at the same time it will be responsible for development of a new species so if we see 
uh, practically what is the impact of uh, these invasive plants for example this hipti surveillance and that is jungli tulasi or tulas uh, you have seen growing along the roads along railway tracks inside the forest in the periphery of forest everywhere hipti surveillance a bushy plant reaching up to the height of 7 8 feet is growing luxuriantly very dense population and what we note that here out of the study of roughly 22 species in a small patch of one by one the septi surveillance is more dominant than rest of the plant some of the species like aragrostis or justicia procumbens euphorbia hilta carnia number of species which used to be local or native which used to grow in the larger number but at present because of invasion by hipti surveillance we find that these species are present in very very comparatively very less number while hipti surveillance which is almost perennial plant is utilizing all the resources which are available in that particular habitat likewise one more example that is of acacia uh, uniflora now acacia uniflora is recently introduced hardly uh, 10 years when this plant was introduced in india but interestingly this plant was introduced to check increase in the population of congress grass or parthenium so to kill the parthenium this species is introduced in india but now what we find that very compact vegetation compact growth of this single species which is uh, this uh, observation is made from very close to the campus area and it shows that not a single any other species can penetrate in compact vegetation of acacia fistula and when a comparison was made with more than 32 species this graph is clearly showing that what is the biomass what is the number or presence of acacia uniflora malacra capitata hipptis tuberculens all these three which are the invasive species in this plot and rest of the species recorded by only one or two specimens so in this way this is the clear cut picture which suggests that what is the potential of these invasive plants which may be which may be entered here unknowingly or knowingly but today they have occupy entire area and now they are using resources which used to be for native ones and at the cost of development of these invasive plants no where native is in existence but there are not only negative impact certainly positive impacts are also useful impact of invasive plants but most of these useful impact they are with team of the human being what we need we try to grow in the later stage they may become invasive so here because of their adaptability to the new area because of their rapid growth they are providing biomass now this biomass may be used in the form of uh, thick non penetrable fencing around the garden or around the farm it may use in the for the purpose of thatching as a firewood sometime as a fodder as a green manure as a leafy vegetable or some time as a medicinal plant and those which are of yesterday invasive now they are used as coal extraction or it a material which form the coal so in this manner all the useful impact it is a criteria which human have created otherwise these plants are of no use or basically they are increasing their total area and having negative impact then question comes if they are having negative impacts 
So, they should be controlled, there should be some management. So, with reference to the management, there may be prevention, there may be risk assessment, there may be identification of various methods. So, prevention which usually involves some form of risk assessment that is clearly most cost effective solution to invasion. But in prevention is possible only when we identify at the time of introduction when they are in the minimum, they are minimum in number and so at this stage manually they can be eradicated or many a time with the use of some BD site, we can remove these invaders. Even at the detection level, introduction level it may be seedling or less number of the plant, detection when they become a colony, when they are many very apparent. So, at that time we can detect them, but still if they are at the vegetative stage then only we can eradicate them, we can remove them. But at the later stage of development, when they come to the flowering, at that time eradication is very, very difficult because physically these plants become very strong and they develop very composite complex type of the population. And at the later stage, when they start flowering, when they start fruiting, development of seed, dispersal of seed, at that time it is just impossible to remove these plant from that particular habitat. So, risk is quantified, quantified by examining the invasiveness, their impact and their potential distribution of the species. Then reducing the intentional use of high risk alien plant. Now, if we know that these plants are having this potential of increase faster growth and increasing in the other area. So, it is better not to bring that plant in our area first as a cultivation and then as a further improvement of the crop. Then there are certain genomic tools also which are proving to be useful for managing these invasive species. While these genomic tools they are very very costly a number of times labs or uh, conditions are not suitable for having these uh, tools because they are too much costing, but one time cost is better to reduce the further growth of these invasive plants and uh, uh, the loss by these plants. So, among the ecological and landscape genomics. It is said that when we incorporate information about the phenotype, about the genotype and about the local environment, there are two ways by which we can go for the further protection, prevention or research. One is the bottom up research and another is the top down research. In bottom up research, here we are not relying on the phenotypic information means what is the name of the plant, what is the type of the plant, what is the appearance of the plant. We identify location likely important for adaptation and genomic signature of selection. So, when we say genomic signature of selection basically it is the phenotype. Because in the field we identify the plants only by their appearance not by their genome. While in case of top down stage here it is the complementary stage where by identifying the plant, invasive plant from their phenotype from their appearance then we try to see which particular genetic information genome is responsible for providing this plasticity or adaptation to the new. So, genome identification is the top down and bottom up is first is the identification of the plant and then going to the genome. 
but top down stage is considered as complementary approach because unless we identify plant we cannot see what type of genome it is having and how this genome is helping in the adaptation to that plant. So, among the genomic tools, number of genomic tools are used to understand dynamic nature of invasive process, in particular genetic markers and transcriptomes approaches have been widely used to detect invasive organism, their historical movement and role of genetic variation. It helps in understanding uh, mode of trans mode of movement of these invasor and from where they are coming and what type of habitat they have come across to reach up to that particular stage or their rate of succession. Very recently, government of India has proposed a law for invasive species in India. In 2020, there was an amendment to the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. There is a mention of invasive alien species and tackling it. The bill introduces alien invasive species with the scope of Wildlife Protection Act and under section 62A, the central government has the power to regulate or prohibit import, trade, position, proliferation of invasive alien species which pose a threat to the wildlife or habitat of India. So, in this way, although government is trying to ban all those plant material or animal material which may become invasive in the area, but those material which are coming intentionally, it is possible to check them. But what about those who are coming without our knowledge? So, it is very difficult to identify and then go ahead with this law. It means that effective and specific management measures are needed to control or to see the sustainability of ecosystem which must include involvement of systematics and improvement of floristic knowledge on the invasive plant. Number of taxonomists, floristists or systematic they are working but they work on the general floristic aspect of the area. They never try to segregate invasive plant as a particular group of the plant. Whatever we try to see, we try to identify them and to name them or put in a particular family. But lot of research is needed and it is possible if taxonomists try to go for this type of activity to identify invasive plants. Because they are moving in the field, they know which particular plant is occupying more and more area or which plant is having that capacity to increase in other type of the ecological geomorphic conditions. The ultimate goal of invasion biology is to understand successful invasion and for this we need to also consider what are the trait of invaders, their biotic interaction and how these are linked to the fitness advantage of invaders and thus adaptation. So, this is not confined only to the taxonomist or ecologist, but number of the other persons it may be biochemist, it may be microbiologist, it may be zoologist or person from the physiology, cytology all need to involve to see what is happening with the particular plant, how it is changing its behavior, adapting itself or in what way it is spreading to the other areas. So, a lot of research gaps or you may say opportunities are available for the young teachers, young researchers. For example, till now we generally go for inventorization of the alien plant, inventorization of weed of the crop plant, weed of the garden, weed along the roadside. So, in addition to weed, 
alien plant those who are not native to the area then what is lacking is invasion stage based inventories as we have seen number of steps are involved in the initial step you cannot identify whether the plant is invasive or not only after getting a big population then they become invader or really affecting surrounding environment negatively so it is necessary to see whether these plants are identifiable at the early stage at which stage these plants are developing second is limited studies on the mechanism of plant invasion hardly few examples we will find in the literature which suggests that these plants have moved like in this manner so there is need of detailed studies on mechanism of plant invasion how they move how they adapt then impact of limited number of invasive plants we know about the uh, lantana lantana camera that is exceeding that is present in deep inside the forest not only in the open land then we have we know about the parthenium we know about number of species of the acacia we know about the lucenia we know about the elenthas excelsa so there are few trees few climbers like micrantha micania number of the herbs so all these plants we know but if we compare total number of the known plants these are hardly few plants about which we know what is the impact of these plants on the surrounding vegetation so lot of plants remain there there is need to standardize method to see whether we can consider them at the early stage or at the later stage then as far as management is concerned only those who are related to the agriculture they are trying to put some weedicide or pesticide to kill or manually to eradicate this plant but that requires lot of labor and cost so it is necessary to identify management option considering use value of invasive alien species so there is lot of scope as large number of plants which are invasive but we don't know about them so in some total we can say that beware of these plants they are actually killer they are coming there to change the habitat change the environment change the biodiversity and having negative impact on the native plants so this is the question and thank you for listening it thank you ma'am thank, thank you, you i hope i hope you have enjoyed this topic because as far as i know this is not the part of your graduation or post graduation but thank you ma'am possibility, possibility of lot of person can involve you may be zoologist or biologist or cyto you know mr or biochemist but everybody has a scope here thank you Thank you so Thank much, you, ma'am. Ma Thank you. And Thank happy you. Teachers Day, ma'am. Happy Teachers Day to happy all of you. Day, Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yes, please. Uh, madam, I, as I was uh, hearing your uh, presentation, two things yeah. came into my mind. Yeah. Uh, one was. uh it was explained that it physiology one of the physiological traits was they yeah. are the warehouse of secondary metabolites yeah and secondary metabolites are most of the time antibiotics like they include antibiotics uh, uh no actually it includes antibiotics also but basically secondary metabolite they are the defense particle defense uh, uh, defensive mechanism of the plant so when these plant they are growing in the condition which is just opposite to their normal natural habitat their native place it means they are finding something very different and to yeah, live right. in that condition they develop these secondary metabolites 
Uh, as far as microbes are concerned, we study yeah. that under uh, these extreme conditions only the microbes yeah. produce the secondary metabolites of which many are useful as antibiotics. So yeah. can say same thing be applied to these plants, then it yeah. can be an advantage. It can be an advantage. See, this is advantage to the plant also to the human being if you want to use them. Right. But here you have to balance. You have to see whether... Uh, negative impact is more or these uses are more useful. So this this line can be checked out, no? This line of yeah, study can, can be, be checked, checked out. Yeah, yeah, this can be checked out. Yeah. And uh, second thing came to my mind, like uh, we study viruses under different groups, like there are different viruses affecting yeah. plants, viruses affecting animals, viruses affecting uh, bacteria. So there is yeah. one class viruses affecting the plants. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, uh, for such type of plants, we can have viruses or certain type of bacteria which will affect these plants only. Because yeah. otherwise, management is very costly, expensive. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. For management, you have to identify what is alternative. Because right. if you use insecticide or pesticide, it means you are... Uh, destroying all other plants which are present there in the surrounding which may be useful yes. so the virus or bacteria or fungus which is uh, um, acting particularly on these plants is useful but we have to check that these uh, these viruses bacteria should not spread in the surrounding area but uh, viruses are studied in this way, no? Like uh, the, it will affect this particular plant, it will affect this particular animal. Yeah. So that also can be uh, done in management, like management of these plants. See, more research is needed. If you have any idea, you can uh, go for this exercise. It may be as project or with your student, you can do this. Right. This will be this will be great help uh, actually in the. Uh, managing of these invasive plants. Just uh, by listening to you, these things came into my mind, so I'd like to discuss with you. Yeah, you can come anytime. Uh, we can sit together and have discussion because there is need of such management. And right. as such, uh, not uh, much information is available. So this is the reason that even you see camera, this Lantana camera, Lantana camera is present from Himalaya to the Kanyakumari. Everywhere, every forest, every wasteland, a lot of lantana. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, this Dodonia viscosa, just last year I have observed this. Okay. This uh, Dodonia viscosa is flourishing at the cost of native plants. Mm -hmm. And number of the seeds and uh, type of the flower, type of the fruit. Fruit is winged, it means it can go away to the further distance. So it is necessary to identify some technique, some bacteria virus which can attack particularly on this plant only, not on the others. Right. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Welcome. Good day. Hello. Hello. Uh, very good afternoon, respected ma'am. Uh, ma'am, this is Dr. Virendra. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually I'm uh, quite uh, very grateful to you because uh, during my PhD work, uh, uh, uh -huh. one of your student, Dr. Rahul Kamde, he had yeah. very, uh, very good help to me because uh, he had he had uh, we had an uh, experimental setup at Botany Department, and okay. uh, as you had said about invasion species, uh, yeah. uh, during my PhD work I used a lantana camera methanolic extract that is being uh -huh. extracted at the department. Mm -hmm. And uh, ma'am, the study is the result is quite much more fruitful. It means uh, even though we we can't imagine that invasive species would be quite helpful for management of the insect pest, as yeah. if I do belong to entomology background, we uh -huh. use it uh, to control the spotted fly population. Uh -huh. And uh, ma'am, the results are quite very wonderful. The farmers were quite happy. So mm -hmm. uh, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you, ma'am. Oh, yes, oh. oh, nice of you. You remember me for this. Thank no, you. No, ma'am. You. Ma'am, your contribution make me, but it means I'm quite much more uh, uh, thankful to you, ma'am. Oh, thank you, thank you. And it is very good to listen to you, ma'am. Thank you very much oh, for wonderful oh, session. Oh, oh, I hope this will be helpful for developing many more projects. You can yes, give it to your student also. Definitely, ma'am. Mm, ma'am, best wishes ahead and wish you very, very happy Teacher's Day. Oh, 
same to you. You all are teachers. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Um, hello, ma'am. This is Vivek Narkhadkar. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, ma'am, uh, you talked about uh, various theoretical aspects of the invasive plants. Yeah. Their remedies. Uh, I just want to know how to approach practically for studying the invasion by plants. Is there any specific methodologies or ecological surveys? What can be done yeah, for yeah, studying yeah. the invasion? So you live in Nagpur or um, any other? Uh, Amravati. Amravati. See, yeah. if, uh, some of the studies, as I have reported, regarding hepatitis and uh, uh, this Caesia oh. uniflora, uh, this okay. study was done by my student, and she is working in Mota Science College. Uh, so, uh, you can contact her, process or uh, methodology is available, but you have first you have to identify what is your objective and what are different aspects. And then you can select number of the plant. For example, just I told you about this um, uh, Sapindesi member. So, yeah. you can work over this or there are number of weeds which are available. You can select any of the invasive plant from the um, agricultural farm hmm. or okay. because uh, roadside they are available but uh, their spread is very fast. So you have to bake plots, then you have to study different stages of development of the plant from seedling to the seed. Hmm. Then what is the biomass, underground biomass, above ground biomass number of the flowers, number of the fruits, number of the seeds produced by that plant and then okay. rate of the seed germination. Okay. Because on that basis you can say if the rate of seed germination is high and dispersal rate is also high, it means that plant is spreading its area. And at the same time you have to see that whether this plant is available in particular area or how far it is, it has been observed. For example, yeah. Amravati, from Amravati you can go to the surrounding area like Akola or Nagpur or any other close by area and through the literature you can see whether this plant is also growing in other states. If the same plants, for example, when we see the flora yeah. and see the occurrence, whether it is rare, whether it is uh, common or occasional, so, from that information, you can say that whether this particular plant is growing in other states, whether it is growing luxuriantly or it is rare. If it is growing luxuriantly, it means you can say that this plant is spreading. So, in this way, okay. you can map out. Mapping is necessary. You can map out that all over India, this is the area where this plant is growing. Then your study will be at the particular place at, or you can select number of the habitat. For example, one from Amravati, 100 mm. kilometer or 200 kilometer away from that spot. So that different type of soil condition or other climatic condition you can observe. And then you have to compare uh, the communities, the community study of particular patches so that you can see what about the other species, whether this plant is dominating and number of the species growing there. Likewise, when you compare different spots in the community manner, then you can come to the knowledge that this plant is dominant in this type of the soil, in other type of the soil, in other climatic condition. So in this way, you can study the invasive plants and at the same time what is the impact of allelopathic impact of invasive plant on the other plants. So extract of the it may be leaf extract or flower extract or entire plant extract and then you can spread that extract on um, other experimental plots where you can grow other uh, uh, crop plants for example vegetable or other uh, pulses. You can go there and put this extract over this on the soil or over the plant to see what is the allelopathic effect of this invasive plant on the other plant. So, okay. 
थैंक यू मैडम मैडम अनदर क्वेश्चन मैम इन योर ओपिनियन व्हाट शुड बी द प्रायोरिटी ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज कंजर्व फॉरेस्ट और कॉलोनाइज्ड एरिया वेयर ह्यूमंस आर लिविंग वी आर लिविंग वेयर वी आर लिविंग वी आर गोइंग टू स्प्रेड इट बिकॉज वी आर नॉट सिटिंग एट वन प्लेस so priority area may be protected area or it may be agricultural field hmm. uh, because if they enter in the protected area there is no way out to remove them even forest hmm. department is not able to remove this uh, lantana camera because hmm. you cannot take out anything from the forest department and with increase protected area means number of the plants we are preserving them we are conserving them but if such type of uh, invasive plants enter in that area uh, they will ultimately affect the local biodiversity of the conserved society yeah. okay oh, thank you so you can go in any forest area or open area uh, but uh, i had this discussion with uh, one of the person from ministry of environment and forest Yeah. Uh, my discussion. Uh, he just uh, asked me how to get rid of invasive plants. Yeah. So I said uh, one of the method is eradication. Yeah. So he said uh, here we are talking about the conservation of plants and you are uh, you are saying eradication. Hmm. So you cannot eradicate plants. So I said yeah. uh, our priority should be the native plants, conservation of native plants. Why we are trying yeah. to conserve the invasive plants? Yeah. So actually he was not convincing. that's why i was asking you uh, what how how to proceed for eradication in uh, uh, protected see, areas you have to make them understand that invasive plants they are not native plant they are yes. there in their native place it means we are not uh, making them to extinct they will remain there but if they are disturbing our natural native vegetation we have to make certain check and among mm. these check there is eradication and as far as mechanical eradication is concerned it is very uh, costly it affair it is very human involved when man power more man power will be there so it is not possible to eradicate and another point if mechanical eradication you are going then it should be only in the vegetative phase many yes, times yes. what we observe that unless the plant comes to the flower and fruit we still mm. we remain there we are watching them but we are not removing them and when they come to the flower and fruit it means now they are spreading mm. because after formation of fruits seeds will scatter to the other area yes yes so, yes so it is only possible if you go for mechanical eradication patch wise patch only in the vegetative phase and that to year after year because in the soil they form seed bank yes in first year you have removed them in the vegetative phase but second year there is chance that number number of the seedlings may come from the seed bank hmm. so repeatedly this process has to go for 3 4 years then only we can say that all the seed banks exhausted and now there is no seed available in that area yes yes sure ma'am yeah, it was very difficult to convince them that uh, need to we have to protect the native plants and eradicate the invasive plants it was very difficult ne we have to show them number see two slides which i have shown you what is of the hepatis and another is of casia show them yeah, these yeah. two slides and then they will mm. understand because most of the person they don't know about the plant those yes. who are sitting at uh, these apex bodies they don't understand mm. this so you have to show them that this yes, is yes. the situation now say what you want to say <laughs> okay oh, thank you madam welcome welcome okay. any more question Uh, lastly madam just out of curiosity i wanted to know uh, like have any of these plants been used for phytobio remediation yes many reports uh, are yeah there. there are number of papers for example uh, ricinus communis and um, gentium stromerium so 
So, some plants have been used to see their impact. They are also wild plant, but since they are having a peculiar type of the chemical composition, so they have been used in the small scale to see what is their impact on the seed germination of these plant and total growth of these plants. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Anyone else? Is it kuch puchna hai? Okay, ma'am, I think there are no questions now. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. On behalf of UGC HRBC okay, Nagpur, I extend my thanks to you, madam, for your wonderful session on invasive species. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank Good you. day. Good day, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you, ma thank you, all the participants. Uh, there are few instructions. Please don't leave the meeting. Uh, here we have finished our today's live sessions. Uh, hereafter, I have uploaded recorded videos on ICT and its application in teaching and learning process. You just go through our site of HRDC Nagpur dot genomeo dot. You will get all the quizzes and assignments. Today you have to submit one quiz and there is one report submission. Report uh, that will be on the basis of our two sessions. 11 बजे का जो सेशन हुआ और अभी मैडम का जो सेशन हुआ उन दो टॉपिक्स के ऊपर आपको रिपोर्ट या तो एब्स्ट्रैक्ट सबमिट करना है और उसके बाद का अभी का जो आईसीटी का सेशन है दैट विल बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रिकॉर्डेड वीडियोस ऑन द टॉपिक डिजिटल इनिशिएटिव्स इन हायर एजुकेशन वो आप अच्छे से देख लीजिए पहले वीडियो को समझ लीजिए उसके बाद ही क्विज अटेम्प्ट करिए बिकॉज़ क्विज में एक ही अटेम्प्ट दिया है सिंगल अटेम्प्ट है तो पहले क्विज ओपन मत करिए फर्स्ट यू गो थ्रू ऑल द वीडियोस दो वीडियोस मैंने अपलोड किए हैं उसके बाद आप लोग क्विज सॉल्व करने के लिए प्रोसीड करेंगे सर ले पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज बी ऑन म्यूट मोड गड़पाइले सर किसी को कुछ पूछना है इफ नो क्वेश्चंस आई लेंड द मीटिंग हियर यस मैम प्रीति मैम हेलो हां यस सर यस मैम बोलिए मैम जो दो दो जो सेशन हुए हैं ना उनका एक ही रिपोर्ट बनाना है ना दोनों मिला के हाँ फाइल एक ही बनाएंगे पेजेस अलग अलग यूज करिए मतलब अगर वर्ड फाइल बना रहे हैं तो पहले आपको रिसोर्स पर्सन का नाम डालना है उनका टॉपिक क्या है वो लिखना है और फिर टॉपिक के नीचे आपको एब्स्ट्रैक्ट लिखना स्टार्ट करना है या तो टाइप करा उसके बाद नेक्स्ट पेज पे सेम फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेशन अगर हैंड रिटन हो तो दो पेजेस में बनाइए दो पेजेस का एक पीडीएफ फाइल बनाए जो कैम स्कैनर से स्कैन करते हैं ना वैसे करके एक पीडीएफ फाइल बनाइए एंड देन अपलोड दैट फाइल ओके मैम थैंक यू ठीक है मैडम वर्ड लिमिट आहे का नाही नाही सर एब्स्ट्रैक्ट असायला पाहिजे एक पेज असला तरी चालेल मैडम लिंक पे देना क्या हां मैडम ते वर्ड्स मध्ये पाहिजे म्हणजे की लिंक मध्ये तुम्ही तो व्हिडिओ टाकलाय प्रिपरेटरी लिंक मध्ये द्यायचा आहे का नाही नाही डायरेक्ट फाइल अपलोड करा मॅडम वर्ड फाइल किंवा पीडीएफ फाइल मैम ये अपलोड कहां करना है ओके मैम थैंक यू hrdc.genomeo.com साइट के ऊपर अगर आप जाते हैं जी आई विल जस्ट शेयर जस्ट वेट फॉर 5 मिनट्स लास्ट 5 मिनट्स आपने अटेंडेंस मार्क की है उस साइट पे जी जी हां तो उसी साइट पे आप देखिए तो आज के डेट में आपको कुछ चीजें दिखेगी जस्ट लेट मी शो यू कैन यू सी माय स्क्रीन यस जी 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 यस सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स एक बार देख लीजिए आप भी अपना थोड़ा सा ब्रेक ले लीजिए आधे एक घंटे का उसके बाद भी आप ये प्रोसीड कर सकते हैं ये जैसे लाइफ साइंस का कोर्स आपको दिखेगा आप इसके अंदर एंटर करेंगे <coughs> See friends, can you see this fifth September date? No, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Sorry. Can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Yeah. So, ये fifth September के नीचे report submission है. यहाँ पे आपको आज का report मतलब कि abstract जो मैंने बताया वो submit करना है. कैसे करेंगे इसके ऊपर क्लिक करने के बाद एक गूगल फॉर्म ओपन होगा गूगल फॉर्म में वो फाइल अटैच करके भेजनी है 
मैम हैंड रिटर्न लिख के उसका स्क्रीनशॉट लेके वैसा भी कर सकते हैं क्या हाँ हाँ कर सकते हैं देखिए ये दो क्वेश्चन है आपका नाम लिखेंगे आप उसके बाद काइंडली सबमिट टू डेज रिपोर्ट तो यहाँ पे एड फाइल का ऑप्शन है एड फाइल में जाके आप अगर स्क्रीन है तो कैप फोटो कैप्चर करके भेज सकते हैं या तो अगर वर्ड या तो पी फाइल है तो वो आप लोग भेज सकते हैं उसके बाद आज रात आठ बजे तक मैम आज बजे तक ही भेजना है उसके बाद बंद हो जाएगा हाँ ट्राई टू सबमिट बाय एट ओ क्लॉक उतना ही मैं बोल सकती हूँ ठीक है मैडम अभी अभी जो आपने फॉर्म दिखा है वो स्क्रीन पे दिखा नहीं कि हम लोग जो है ना रिपोर्ट सबमिशन आप अपने ही तरफ से देख रहे हैं क्या आपके कंप्यूटर में नहीं नहीं मैं आपका ही स्क्रीन देख रही हूँ मैडम ये देखिए ना ये जो रिपोर्ट सबमिशन है कैन यू सी दिस कर्सर नहीं मैडम वहाँ स्टॉप हो गया है मे बी नेटवर्क इशू वहीं पर ही स्टॉप हो गया है कोई मतलब दिख नहीं रहा है बाकी yes, किसी, किसी को दिख रहा है कि किसी को भी नहीं दिख रहा है Now what is the situation? अभी क्या हो रहा है अभी दिखा फिफ्थ सेप्टेम्बर दिखता है ठीक है मतलब पहला जो ऑप्शन है रिपोर्ट सबमिशन फिफ्थ सेप्टेम्बर इसके ऊपर आप लोग क्लिक करेंगे एक लिंक है उस लिंक के ऊपर भी आपको क्लिक करना है गूगल फॉर्म की लिंक है ये ऐसा डेली रहेगा तो आज एक बार देख लीजिए आगे के सारे दिन में आपको ऐसे ही सबमिशन करने हैं ये गूगल फॉर्म में आप यहाँ पे आपका नाम लिखेंगे और आज का जो रिपोर्ट आप बनाएंगे वो फाइल यहाँ पे ऐड फाइल्स के थ्रू जाके अटैच करेंगे एनी डाउट अभी भी किसी को कुछ डाउट होगा तो पूछ लीजिए कुणाला कहीं विचारा ऐसा असल तो विचारा क्लियर है थैंक यू मैडम ठीक है अगर वो जो वीडियोस देखने हैं वो वीडियो नंबर फोर और फाइव है हाँ फोर और फाइव नहीं सेशन फोर के ही दो वीडियो सेशन फोर मतलब समझ में आ रहा है पहला सेशन हुआ अपना योगा सेशन दूसरा हुआ ग्यारह बजे वाला सेशन थर्ड वन वॉज चतुर्वेदी मैडम का सेशन और फोर्थ सेशन जो अभी रिकॉर्डेड वीडियो के फॉर्म में रहेगा ओके ठीक है और अभी जो दो सेशन हुए हैं मॉर्निंग से जो तीन सेशन हुए उसके रिकॉर्डिंग अभी अपलोड कर रही हूँ मैं यूट्यूब पे तो वो इसके ऊपर दिखना शुरू रहेगा आपको वो शाम तक मैं अपलोड करूंगी तो डेली आपको रीडिंग मटेरियल शाम तक मिल जाते जाएगा आप लोग उसको डाउनलोड करके अपने पास रख सकते हैं जो भी वीडियोस अपने रहेंगे वेबेक्स के रिकॉर्डिंग मैडम एक डाउट है ये जो अभी सेशन है ना सेशन फोर दिख रहा है सेशन फोर उसके बेस पे क्विज है उसके बेसिस पे क्विज है तो पहले क्विज हाँ ये ऑन है आप अभी उसको स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं पहले वीडियोज देख लीजिए एंड देन गो फॉर क्विज ओके जिसमे रिपोर्ट सबमिशन फिफ्थ सेप्टेम्बर से लिखा हुआ है तो फिर सी में है क्या मैम दोनों का मतलब एब्सट्रैक्ट सबमिट करने का दोनों का एब्सट्रैक्ट एक ही लिंक में सबमिट करना है मैं बार बार बता रही हूँ एक ही फाइल बनाएंगे मैं मल्टीपल फाइल एक्सेप्ट नहीं होगी एक ही फाइल में आपको सभी चीजें बनानी है रिपोर्ट ऑफ बोथ द सेशन मतलब मून मैडम का भी और चतुर्वेदी मैडम का भी एक ही इसमें बना के एक ही इसमें सबमिट कर रहा है जी सेशन इस टॉपिक और रिसोर्स पर्सन का नाम लिख के उसके दो चार लाइन लिखना है ना एक्सट्रैक्ट में और नेक्स्ट एक पेज एक पेज पूरा मैडम ये जो अभी वेबेक्स पे जो अभी सेशन चालू है ये जूम पे नहीं होंगे क्या मैडम नहीं ये यूनिवर्सिटी के इसमें वेबेक्स को ही एक्सेप्ट किया है और हमें उसी का एक्सेस दिया है सो इट विल गो विध वेबेक्स ओनली 
नहीं एक्चुअली हो क्या रहा है मैडम बीच में कुछ मैसेज वगैरह आ गया इस पे मोबाइल पे तो या फिर उसमें कुछ कनेक्टिविटी का प्रॉब्लम आ गया तो आवाज पूरा चले जाता आवाज ही नहीं आता फिर रिज्वाइन करना पड़ता है लेफ्ट करके ज्वाइन करना पड़ रहा है फिर से फिर और फिर बाद में आवाज चालू होता है अच्छा ठीक है क्योंकि ये सारी चीजें क्लाउड पे सेव हो रही है और वहां से यूजीसी को जा रही है तो हमें यही प्लेटफॉर्म यूज करना है ये okay, सेशन okay. वीडियो यही देखना है मैडम हाँ, इसी इसमें जाके ये इस अभी जो भी एक दो घंटे एक दो घंटे में मैं यहाँ पे अपलोड कर दूंगी मॉर्निंग से जितने भी सेशन हुए अच्छा मतलब अभी क्लोज है आईसीटी का जो कर रहा है वो यही है मतलब इस सेशन को ये जो मैंने दो दिखा रही हूँ ना पार्ट वन हाँ। पार्ट टू वीडियोस ये आपको अभी अच्छा। थोड़ा देर के ब्रेक के बाद भी कर सकते हैं अभी कंटिन्यूशन में करना होगा तो आप लोग कर सकते हैं आफ्टर कम्प्लीटिंग दिस मीटिंग ओके ठीक है तो आप लोग प्रोसीड करिए थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू कल सुबह मिलेंगे हम सवा सात बजे आज वो योगा के जो मैडम थे श्रेयसी मैडम श्रेयसी मैडम ने कुछ इंस्ट्रक्शन दिए थे कल के सेशन के लिए चेयर योगा के लिए यस यस मैम तो वो ध्यान में रखिए और उस हिसाब से अरेंजमेंट करके रखिए कल के सेशन के लिए ओके ओके चलिए थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू हैप्पी टीचर्स डे सभी को हैप्पी टीचर्स डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू टीचर्स डे एवरी